Hi there, welcome to the third video in my series on differentiating inverse hyperbolic functions. And in this one, we're going to be looking at differentiating y equals the inverse than of x over a, a being a constant. And it can be shown that dy by dx equals a divided by a squared minus x squared. And if we take the special case when the constant a is 1, then we get y equaling the inverse than of x, giving us dy by dx equals 1 divided by 1 minus x squared. And I'd encourage you to try and remember these results because we're going to use them in further differentiation and also in integration. Now if ever you are asked to show this result, I'll take you through the method. So if we have y equals the inverse than then of x divided by a, then taking the than to both sides, we would therefore have than of y would be equal to x divided by a. Now if you've been looking at my previous videos in this series, you'll know that there's two methods that we can go about differentiating these kind of functions. One is by making x the subject, working out what dx by dy is, and then taking the reciprocal to get dy dx. And the other method is by using implicit differentiation. So I'm going to take you through both methods. We'll start first of all by making x the subject. If we do that, multiply both sides by a, we get x equals a than of y. And differentiating both sides now with respect to y gives us dx by dy equals, and the differential of than y is sesh squared y, so it's going to be a sesh squared y. Now we need to express this in terms of x, and all we've got is than y equals x over a. So we're looking for some kind of connection between these two functions. And we get that connection from the basic hyperbolic identities. And you should be familiar with this one that we've talked about in previous tutorials, and that is sesh squared y is identical to 1 minus than squared y. So this is fairly straightforward. We know that than y is x over a, so if we square that we're going to have 1 minus x squared over a squared. And we can put this all over a common denominator of a squared and get a squared minus x squared. So this is something then that you're going to need to use. So we'll just border this round here. And we can use it as substituting it in here. If we multiply by a, then what we're going to get is a squared minus x squared just over an a, since the a's will cancel. So we've got a squared minus x squared all divided by a. So if we reciprocate this, we therefore have dy by dx equals a all over a squared minus x squared. And that's the result then that we had to show. Now I did say that we could differentiate this an alternative way, and that was by implicit differentiation. So what we do is we differentiate this equation here with respect to x. So just put up here differentiate with respect to x. And so to differentiate than y with respect to x we need to use implicit differentiation. Differentiate it first with respect to y and then multiply it by dy by dx. So differential than y with respect to y is going to be sesh squared y, and then multiply it with dy by dx. And if we differentiate x over a with respect to x, it's just going to be 1 divided by a. 
Now, we can see that sesh squared y is a squared minus x squared over a squared. So we can substitute that in there. So we have a squared minus x squared, all divided by a squared, multiplied with dy by dx, and that equals 1 divided by a. Now, if I multiply both sides by a squared, I can see that this a here will cancel with this a squared here and just go a times. And then rearranging this, multiplying by a, and then dividing by a squared minus x squared to both sides gives us the result that we want. That is dy by dx equals a divided by all of a squared minus x squared. So, two ways then of differentiating inverse than of x over a. And leave it up to you to decide whichever method you feel is easier. Well, that brings us now to the end of differentiating these inverse hyperbolic functions. But in my next series of tutorials, what I'll be looking at is combining a lot of ideas like the chain rule product and quotient rule for differentiating combinations of these functions. So maybe I'll see you there and uh, we'll run through those examples.